everyone. So today's video is going to be all about what you should pack in your hospital bag. So this video has actually been extremely highly requested and I'm sorry it's taken me so long to finally do this. Um, I know that there are some of you right now that are like, oh my goodness, I'm giving birth in so many weeks. I need to know what to pack in my hospital bag. So I'm here for you guys. I'm gonna let you know what I definitely think is a must have in your hospital bag. But I do wanna let you guys know too is that every hospital is different. Honestly, I feel like most hospitals already provide you a lot of the postpartum care stuff because you're paying for it with your hospital bill. But I have seen some comments where in some other areas where they do not get anything. So my biggest recommendation to you guys is when you do your hospital tour, go ahead and ask your tour guide, what do they provide for postpartum care? Do they provide the pads? Do they provide the tux, the cream, the mom washer? Like, do they provide this and this? Make sure to ask them that to see what they do provide, to see what you actually need to pack. For my hospital, they provided everything and I had no idea. So I definitely did pack some of it with me thinking I was gonna need it and I never did. So definitely find out what they provide for you because it will save you from buying double because you're paying for it already. So that way you don't have to make the purchase on Amazon. You can always go back and purchase more when you go home if you need more, but I actually just took some extra from the hospital and I was good to go. I didn't even have to open up a lot of the stuff that I bought. So um, that's my first recommendation to you guys. First off, during the hospital tour, if you already had your hospital tour, go ahead and call them and they'll let you know what you need. I have quite a bit on here of what I recommend for you guys to have in your bag with you. Every experience is different. Like I really can't touch much on a C-section because I did not have one. I had a vaginal birth, so I don't know the care after a C-section to be honest, I'm sorry about that. Um, I also had a very easy delivery. It was quick, I wasn't in labor for that long. Um, my water broke on its own. I was already like four centimeters dilated when I got in there. <laughs> so I had a very easy birth for my first time and I had minimal tearing. So I'm very thankful for that. I honestly thought that was very common, but when I was talking to a lot of family and friends about their experiences, I found out quickly that it's not that common. I don't wanna scare you guys. I don't wanna scare you, but that also affected my aftercare. Like I didn't need any ice packs down there for very long. I didn't need the tux pads for very long either. Honestly, I kind of stopped doing those things after I left the hospital. But I know every postpartum care is different for every experience that you may have. I definitely also want to give like a little tip before going into labor is you want to walk a ton. I see many times, I think that's what I definitely contribute to having an easier labor is because I worked out um, with a trainer up until like 28 weeks to 30 weeks. I put on a lot of weight, but I definitely did keep moving. I never let myself stop. So if I could give you one tip that I didn't take that I wish I would have, was to watch the weight. Keep your weight gain to a minimum because the more weight that you put on, the harder your pregnancy is going to be. And then also never stop moving. Walk every single day. Just walk like a mile every single day. Like honestly, it will make you feel so much better. I never stopped even till the end of my pregnancy. I started slowing down a little bit towards the end, but I never stopped. I never stopped moving. I never sat and laid down for a day, like for a day or like for a ton of hours. I was always going and I think that's what helped my pregnancy progress a lot faster. I definitely recommend that because I see in other situations where if the woman doesn't move as much, they have a lot harder of a delivery. And then I saw with my trainer, she put on like 25 pounds. She ran like up to her delivery and had the easiest going delivery that was like only three hours for her first delivery. And then she was back to running a mile after like a week later, crazy. But it truly, like you're having your body in shape, keeping it moving, keeping it working, keeping the weight lower will really help. Just to let you guys know. So just right now, if you're reaching the end, don't stop walking, don't stop moving, unless your doctor tells you not to. <laughs> But anyways, let's go ahead and get into what the important part of this video is, and that is the hospital bag. So in your hospital bag, you wanna either pack like a mini suitcase or a duffel, try to keep the luggage to a minimum, even though some of these rooms are like huge now. Um, ours had, we had our own private room with our own bathroom, which was really nice. You wanna pack your clothes that you're gonna go home in. So you wanna pack underwear, cause you're gonna have the mesh panties there 
but sometimes having your own underwear is just better and plus it's a little bit more form-fitting keeps things in place so the underwear that I recommend is the where are pa high waist ones I really like those ones because it kept everything like very snug and it went high waist up to my belly button so it also helped my um, uterus to contract down another big kind of heads up that I know that a lot of people don't know especially when it's your first is that after you have your baby and you are nursing it actually makes your uterus contract so your first like feeding and everything like you're gonna feel that pain in your stomach um, that's because your uterus is con contracting which is why nursing and breastfeeding is really good after you have a baby because it not only gives them the nutrients but it also helps shrink your uterus back down. So um, just a heads up, it's gonna hurt at first, but just power through it, it goes away. Um, but that's why I also really like the high waist underwear because it kind of pushes everything in and compresses it together and helps the uterus shrink back down. Um, another thing is leggings. So I've read so many things about them saying, oh, bring clothes that you fit in at four months or six months. Your thighs don't really change. <laughs> like you're, your hips are a little wider. Like honestly, you don't really, like what really changes is your bump. That's the only thing that changes, but your bump doesn't even completely shrink back down. It does look like a four month, no. Mine look like a five, six month bump. Bring leggings that you fit in at that moment. The ones I like are there's the Hama tummy compression ones where they're gonna help compress the tummy together. And then another one that I liked is the Seraphine maternity ones. Those ones were also really nice. They're nice and high-waisted and they definitely feel like they compress things a little bit better. I wore those the end, complete end of my pregnancy and then after my pregnancy too, my sister is living in them. She loves them. So definitely check out those ones. I'll have all the links down below. So you wanna pack those. So you wanna pack your going home outfit. So it could definitely be a maxi dress too, but I just wanted, leggings just felt like that held things together. So that's why I liked leggings. Um, you also wanna have a nursing bra with you. I actually just kept my nursing bra on throughout labor and delivery, just because I didn't want my boobs popping out or anything. So I just did a nursing bra. Desire Love is a good one. Um, Bam boobies are pretty good. There's also, oh, the Medela ones are very, very comfortable. They're thin, but they're comfortable. Um, I will have all those linked down below for you. So you definitely wanna have a nursing bra on because you're gonna be nursing like every two to three hours if you are. Um, and then you want a nursing tape to go home in. The brand I really love is the Suik. It's S-U-I-E-K. That one I love. I have so many of those because I slept in them too. So those are amazing. So you'll want those. Those, honestly, I stayed in the gown the entire time. I didn't change. I changed the gown, but I didn't change into my own clothes until we left the hospital. So I think it really comes down to what you guys wanna be in and what makes you feel comfortable. But for me, I didn't change at all. So I brought clothes to wear during the day. I never did that. I only changed when we finally left. So it just depends on what you wanna do. I would just bring a couple outfits just in case if you do wanna change. But definitely leggings, nursing bra, nursing tank, and a jacket. Because if you have a sweatshirt, it's gonna be harder to nurse and harder to get out of. So just bring a nice jacket just in case you get cold because the hospitals do get really cold. And then also if you decide that you want to change and not be in your gown, you can bring some nursing friendly PJs with you that will be easy to nurse in. Again, like I said, I did not change at all. I just kind of just changed my gown and that was it. So you can definitely change that. Mine even had a shower to shower in and whatnot. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie, did I shower? No, I didn't shower until I got home. <laughs> I was just so tired and I know I'm not the only one, you guys. I've talked to other moms and they were the same as me. You were just so tired and yeah, so I just changed my gown, but definitely if you decide that you don't wanna be in that gown, bring some nursing friendly PJs. There are some really good ones at Target and you can even find some good options on Amazon as well. I'll see if I can find a couple that I like and I will put them down below for you guys. Bring your phone charger or any charger to maybe watch movies on. A lot of the hospitals have a big screen TV in them. Ours did, but I was so obsessed with Desperate Housewives at the time. I've watched that series so many times. So I watched that while I was in the hospital and I honestly never slept. I don't know how I did it. I never slept. I barely slept after having delivery. Um, I just want, I was up with her. I, I didn't want to sleep. So, 
but I watched, uh, I brought my iPad and I watched Us for Housewives on it. So if you want to have your own option of what to watch, bring a laptop or an iPad or your phone, but bring a charger for it. Definitely recommend that. Especially if you have a longer delivery, um, like labor, it kind of makes it go by a little bit better to be able to watch something while you're in labor. Another thing to bring is a nipple cream. Um, just as a backup, if you are nursing and your nipples are just really hurting from nursing, then definitely bring a nipple cream. So one that I recommend is Mother Love. I really, really like that one. Okay, so next up, since you do not want to be walking barefoot on those floors, um, I recommend slippers or the socks with the grips on them because you don't want to slip either. So bring either or whatever is more comfortable for you. I feel like the socks would take up less space than the slippers, to be honest. I brought slippers but I think the socks with the grips on the bottom are also a good recommendation. I will find some inexpensive ones and link them down below for you. Bring your toothbrush, your face wash, and any like brushes and hair tie. That was definitely needed and like toiletries like deodorant and stuff. Honestly, I didn't even use my own toothbrush. I ended up using the one that was packaged up in my bathroom. <laughs> I was I was just not about going into my suitcase, you guys. I barely grabbed anything out of there. So mine provided a toothbrush. So I just used theirs. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, I just was not about going through my bag for some reason. I was so tired. But, um, so definitely make sure to pack those, a hair tie for during labor and delivery because you'll want your hair up. For the dads, you guys, oh, I had so many friends tell me this. And then I told Joel, but he did not listen to me and he greatly regrets it. Anyone that he talks to now that is expecting a baby, he quickly tells them this. Bring your own pillow and blanket. <laughs> Because their pillows are so bad and their blankets are so thin. He was so cold, you guys. He was so cold. And I told him, I was like, I didn't feel bad for him because I was like, I told you to bring a pillow and a blanket and you did not listen. And now that is something that he tells everyone. So bring a pillow and a blanket. Us moms, we're super comfy. We get as many pillows as we want, like, because you're using them for nursing and whatnot. And I was comfy. I was very, very comfortable. But the dads, not so much. So definitely bring your own pillow and your blanket because again, it gets really cold in there. Next up, bring your going home outfit for the baby. I recommend bringing two sizes. Bring a newborn outfit and bring a zero to three month outfit. I thought my little girl was going to be big. I thought she was definitely gonna be in zero to three months. But that girl could barely fill out a newborn. She was six pounds, 15 ounces, and then she was 20 and a quarter inches long. So she was tall and very skinny. So <laughs> she like did not fill out anything, you guys. I actually had to go get more newborn stuff for her afterwards. I had my mom run to Target because I didn't have enough newborn clothes for her. It was crazy. I did not think she was gonna be that little. Yeah, bring two sizes, cause you don't know how big they're gonna be. That's going to surprise you. All right, so I'm back. I adjusted some settings so the coloring looks a little off. That's why, but <laughs> I completely forgot about my dog groomer's appointment and I just got the phone call and I was like, oh shoot. I, you guys, no joke, yesterday when I saw it on my calendar, I was like, I just know I'm going to forget it. I just know and I forgot it, so, but it was okay. They still took them, so I just dropped them off, and now I'm back to finish up this video. So the next thing that you guys need to pack in your hospital bag is paperwork. Most likely, you'll have paperwork for the hospital. Um, I think ours had to smell some in, and then some you just take it with you, but make sure you pack your paperwork. Also pack some snacks in there, like little bars and stuff, so that way you have food to snack on, because you get three meals, well, my hospital gave us three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then Joel had to go to the cafeteria for his food, but definitely having some snacks, like say if it's in the middle of the night and you're like kind of hungry and the cafeteria is closed, you'll have snacks. And then I also packed like a really big water jug and they were so sweet. The nurses always just filled it up for me. So I was constantly making sure I was drinking enough water. So definitely pack like a big water jug. That is like a definite must have. And this next one is actually just an option, but you can pack a couple pads of your own. Like if you want, like the ones I really liked were the overnight ones from Always. They're the Always Maxi. I will have them linked down below, but those ones were really good. I liked it just because I didn't have to worry about going through or anything like that, you know? Um, the ones at my hospital were actually kind of thin, which they were fine because I had this ice pack thing that was big too. So those were okay, but once I went home, I was like, oh, I'd rather have my own pads. So those were the pads that I liked. I also still grabbed a couple extra from the hospital too, but theirs were thinner than those ones. 
So just pack like, you know, like three or four of them just of your own. So that is everything to pack in a hostel bag. I hope you guys found this video helpful. I will have all the links and everything and the list of all the stuff that you need listed down below in the description box. So make sure to check that out and kind of just make your checklist, you know, make sure to pack your hostel bag about four weeks before your due date. You don't know how early you're going to go into labor or how late, honestly. It's just no one really knows. I had a gut feeling that I was going to be early and I ended up being eight days early, but I just, I don't know, maybe mom, like you kind of feel it, you know, I felt it. I was like, I'm, she's going to be early. I just knew it. Like, especially when I started losing my mucus plug at 32 weeks, I was like, I think she's going to come early and I was right, but you just never know. So make sure to have that bag packed. Make sure to have your infant car seat already installed in your car so that way you're already ready to go. And if you're worried about how to put them in the infant car seat and like tighten it everything, the nurses help you a lot there too. So we had them double check and like show us and stuff just to be sure. You don't have to worry about any diapers or anything. They will have all that for you. They'll have a snot sucker, like the little bulb thing. They'll have thermometer. Well, my, this is what my hospital had. They had the thermometer. They had everything for us. We did not need anything except for the outfit that the baby went home in so that's all you really need to worry about the baby stuff they'll have you covered you guys um, especially also if you end up needing formula the hostels will have the formula there for you so yeah anyways so that is everything right there I hope you guys found this video helpful if you did please give it a thumbs up I am definitely gonna be doing a baby registry one about everything that you need to have on your baby registry and also basically it's gonna be like everything that you should hopefully have before the baby comes to make your lives a lot easier. I have the longest list ever, you guys, for that video. That video is going to be extremely long, <laughs> but it's gonna be extremely helpful too. I've definitely looked at some of the stuff that I like that was a little bit pricier, so I wanted to find more affordable pieces with it too. So I've been doing tons of research, but stay tuned for that one. That will be coming very soon, but it will be a long one, but it will literally be everything that you need and it will create like the perfect baby registry for you guys. So definitely stay tuned for that and I will see you guys in my next video.